Well, it's good to be able to be able to stand up here again tonight. Amen. I had threats from Randy this morning. <laughs> if I didn't do good, he's going to beat me up. Threats from Marty tonight, so I'm sorry in the middle of the pick here tonight. You know. But no, I, I desire and love your pr uh, prayer tonight that God, Johnny can't deliver nothing up here, but God has to do the delivery. I can, I can read and study and, and take what God has put on my heart and try to bring it out, but God has to deliver the message. There ain't nobody can take God's work and do anything with it, but God can work through us as a vessel to get things done. And I appreciate everyone tonight and, and hope you'll get a blessing out of God's word tonight. And just pray for me. And if you got your Bibles with you tonight, we're going to be reading out of Matthew. Uh, very familiar scriptures. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, start with verse 13 through verse 23. <coughs> this is the Lord talking here saying, Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns and figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree, good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Mm. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time you've given us tonight, God. We just pray, Lord, that you'll take your word here, God, and deliver the message out, God, that you would have to go out. God, we just pray, God, that for everyone here here tonight, Lord, that is in the need of a Savior, Lord, in need of guidance, Lord. We know that you're the one that can guide us in that path that you'd have us to walk. And God, we thank you for all you've done. All you're going to do in Jesus' precious name tonight. Amen. 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 Appreciate everyone coming tonight. And I'll try to not be before you long and tired tonight. But, you know, just according, according to what God does, how long we'll be or what we'll be doing. But uh, I just wanted to. Uh, talk a little bit tonight, you know, we talk about these things that we go through in life and things that happen, and the first thing when I got to studying on this and thinking about this, it brought me back to when I was a young man, I think I was around 11 or 12 years old, just a smaller guy, and a couple of friends decided one day that we need to go to this little cave they had found and go in there and check it out. So we made plan to do that. It's on a Saturday morning, I think it was, that we got together and went out and 
I had never been, I don't think at this time I had never been in the cave, period. But I know that I had never been in this one. And when we got there and started looking for the entrance of it, we found it. And it was a very small hole that we found to go in at. And I got to looking at that, and they were looking at it, and they went ahead and started going on in, you know, crawling through the little hole. And, and I thought, man, I don't even know if I can, and I was a small guy then, and I thought, I don't know if I can even get through this thing or not. So they went on in, and I told them, I said, I'll be right behind you. And they went on through the hole, and it took me a few minutes to get on in there. And by the time I did, they had their flashlights, and they had moved on around and went on through the tunnel for them. And here I was getting at the beginning here, and this so happened that before I left the house, I thought about sticking this flashlight in my pocket, one of those little uh, flashlights, you know, you get the little handheld jobs. But I never thought about the batteries. So when I crawled into this hole, even though they were gone, I could see them up ahead in the tunnel there, or in the cave, they shined their light around, and I could see them, you know, they looked around and stuff. And I went ahead and pulled my light out, and turned it on, and started finding my way up, and, and uh, into the cave. And I went, and as I got up through there, those batteries that I forgot to look at, all of a sudden, decided they wasn't going to work anymore. So here I am, midway to this cave, in darkness. Just so happened, just so happened, that one of my friends up in front of me up there had his flashlight and I could see where he was at and, and give me a little bit of light to be able to get on up through there and be able to find a way. When I got up to about where he was, just so happened that his battery went dead too. <coughs> so here we are, we're both here in the middle of this tunnel trying to figure out exactly where we're at and what to do. We had a few steps further and we realized we seen the sun shining through this place in the cave. And we thought we could make that point there, the sun is shining enough that we won't have to have no light. The other guy had done gone on and he was on out toward the end of the cave. So we went ahead and worked our way on up through there and got to the big opening. You know, the place we had to come in back here, we had to crawl through on our bellies and it was tight and hard to get through. We got to this end of this cave. And it was a big opening, you could walk right out of it. And to be able to walk out, after being through all this darkness and stuff, to be able to walk out in the light of that sunshine and know that we was all right then, and to look around and see the green grass and the flowers growing, didn't really have any idea right at the time exactly where we're at. We knew we were on somebody's property somewhere but didn't know who it was. And it was just a good feeling to come out of that dark place and be able to be in the light. Mm -hmm. And to have sun shining down on us. And see the beautiful things that God had created. And you know, I got to thinking, as I was thinking about that, I got to thinking, you know, that's the way it is with Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I know all of you seen a old spat that you use, change the oil, put oil in cars and stuff. You know, you take that oil spout, they're about yay long, up here at the top, they're pretty good size around, and as they go down, by the time they get to the bottom, they ain't much bigger than your pinky. And I got to thinking, you know, when 
When we get saved, we become a child of God. And we go to follow Him. It's like that old spout. We can take, you know, it says the, His way is narrow. In other words, you've got that old spout there, and, and follow Him is just like that old spout. You can choose to walk in that narrow way and get started and get your life with Jesus Christ and that close relationship. But today, most people don't want to do that. Most, most people today don't want that close relationship. They want to know that, you know, I, I, I know Jesus Christ and, 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 and I feel like He's saving all this. But to walk with him in that close place, they don't want to do that. They want to go and sneak around to this end up here that's big. When you want to come through that bottom side, it's like that old cave I was in. You come through that bottom side, you crawl through this little hole, you get to the end, it opens up, and there's beautiful stuff there. That's the way it is with Jesus, following him. You know, we start that narrow way. And we go through, and we do as Jesus would have us to do. Jesus says, follow me, and do what I would have you do. And so we start that narrow way, Brother Vern, and we're walking, we're having fellowship, and we're doing things that God would have us to do. And one of these days, we're going to come up that funnel there, the long, hard time that we've went through, the suffering we've done, the trials we've faced, we're going to come up through that funnel. One day, Brother Hagin, we're going to look up and we're going to see that great light. Amen. It's going to be the light of Jesus that we can see and we're going to know that we have passed through yes. the dark times and the hard times of our life. We're now Amen. in the open. We're now where we can understand and know that we're home. And we've got to realize that. And we've got to keep our minds set on that because if we don't, no. there's always people out here every day that the devil's got out here they're saying, Randy, why do you want to crawl up that little about there and go this way when you come up here to this end here and come in and, man, you've got all kinds of room. But if you come in that old about the big end and you go down, when you get to the end of that narrow point there, you know, you pour that oil out of that oil bottle into that spout, and you've got that spout sticking in here, you're pulling that big in. When, old oil, when that oil goes down and drips right through that small end down there, it's going out into the engine of the car, into the oil pan. Well, you just say that when you get that oil pulled out and you go to crank that car up, that oil is going to be destroyed. It's going to be sent out here, sent out there. And that's what we've got to look at with ourselves. If we try to go in a way that is not pleasing to God, in a way that God doesn't recommend to go, He wants us to come the narrow way, and we try to slip in. He says there's no way to come. If we come any other way, we're the same as thieves and robbers. So we've got to take time to realize it's going to be harder for me to walk and go this narrow way here. But if I don't go this way, this is the way God told me to come. If I don't go this way, then I'm going to face destruction. And destruction is not what we're looking at today. Destruction, we're looking for everlasting life. That's what he promised us. He said you'll get everlasting life. Forever with him. 
But we're going to try and live some other way, doing some other way, and, and trying to do things our way, feel like that God, maybe He told us this, Jesus told us this, but we're smarter than Him. We know we can go this way here and still come out the same way. That's not the way it works. You know, the Bible says that when Jesus saves us, His love, His mercy, everything, God is great. Amen. And everything that God has promised us, God will do. Amen. And when God, when we, when we go to when we go to the Lord and, and we get saved and we uh, accept Jesus Christ our Savior, I mean that is eternity. If we go with Him, that is eternity. It's not something that's going to be shook out tomorrow and and, and all this. We'll be back out in the in the dark space where we was. We're going to be saved forever, just like. You know, Christ ever would. If we live the way that he's asked us to live. There's too many people out today, there's too many, uh, the devil's got so many people out here today that's trying to take and offset everything that God has told us. They're trying to tell them. You know, the devil's got people out here that'll tell you anything you want to hear to get you out of, of God's will. That's right. And that's what a lot of these people do. I mean, they have done, and it's going on today all around us. I mean, you, you've got churches today that are just telling people anything that they want to hear just to keep them coming there and keep them paying their tithe and keep, you know, a paying preacher the money. And there's nothing wrong with paying a preacher for doing his job. Amen. A pastor of church, I'm, I'm a person, I think a pastor of church, like the one we got right here, he deserves every dime he can get. But there's some of them out there that don't deserve that because they're not standing and telling the people the truth. They're lying to them and just tell them anything they can to get them to come up and put their money in the pot and, and to stay there at their church and back their church. But it's not all about backing these churches. It's about backing God's churches. Until we get to the point that we're ready to back to God's church, we're going to listen to anything anybody tells us. We don't watch out. We've got to stop. We've got to realize. If somebody comes, like Brother Vern tells us all the time, we've got to try to stay in God's work and, and try to understand it and try to, listen, you know, try to understand what Jesus is trying to say to us. If we don't, We'll believe anything. If we don't, we'll go anyway. I mean, I'm not the smartest man in the world. And if I didn't know what God expected, I mean, I could probably be told anything, Brother Byrne. <coughs> but knowing what God has said, what God's Word said, and what Jesus expected of us, and what Jesus said that He would lead us through, See, I know. But people, they are just willing, they're willing to follow anything and go any way if it meets up to their standards. They want to meet their standards. They want to live like they want to live, go where they want to go, do what they want to do, but they want God to bless them. And it don't work that way. You'll either live for God and God will bless you. You'll live for Him or you can turn your back on God and say, I'm going to do things my way because, you know, I feel this is all right. And God will eventually destroy you. I don't believe that, that God will let us get out here and, and, and listen to the devil and let the people be and tell us, you know, to do this, do that, and let's go ahead and do it. And we live that way, we're just making a mockery of him and his word. And we've got to realize if you look around today, 
And look at our country. Look at the things that's going on. We've got wars here. We've got wars there. Uh, I mean, even even in our uh, uh, politics and stuff now, we've got people fighting. Really, it was some of the stupidest stuff I've ever heard of. It's not really anything that needs to be fought over. It's just the fact that nobody can get along now. Everybody wants to be right, and nobody wants to be wrong. But the situation that we're in today, if anybody's right, it's God. And if anybody's wrong, it's us. We've got to be willing to look and accept what God has tried to do for us, what God has brought us through. We can't step back and try to fight and, and think, I'm going to outsmart him, I'm going to do things my way, and I'm going to enjoy this, and I'm going to do this, and everything will be all right at the end. Because, no, at the end, you're going to be like that oil right down the out, uh, oil spout. You're going to be cast down the engine that's going to burn you up. So we've got to stop and realize what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. You say, oh, we don't, we don't know when the time's going to give up, when time's going to end. No, we don't. But the question is, are we willing to take a chance? Are we willing to take a chance and gamble with what some man has told us or what some woman has told us or anything else. Gamble our soul to eternity in hell. And that's exactly what we're doing. If we go off of God's word and try to go some other route, then we're gambling with our soul. And it's not a day pain. It's not a night pain. It's a forever pain. I mean, I, for the last two and a half, three years, I've been struggling with this back problem. You know, I thought a lot better earlier. Kept on going and going and going. But I kept fighting it. <coughs> keeps fighting it. keeps getting worse. I can handle the days down here. But Brother Bernie, if they told me I had lived like this the rest of my life, I mean for eternity, I could not be happy at all. If they told me I was going to hurt like this for eternity, and I'd never, ever, ever get over it, <coughs> I would be destroyed. You know, you got to You gotta watch people, you gotta watch what they're doing, you gotta watch how things are going in their life and what's going on with their life and all this stuff. You can't believe everything that you hear. I'm not perfect. Brother Bernard T, he's not perfect. I don't think nobody in here is perfect. But to go out and actually mislead you and tell you it's flat out lie. I don't want to do it, and I know Brother Vernon don't want to do it, or none of the rest of you. But we can tell the people we talk to, we can tell are these people for real? Are they really God's people? Or are they just out there trying to we in souls to the devil. I mean, that's basically what it's bound down to. We've got to be able to stand and, and be honest with people and let them know that it's God's way or no way. I'm glad we're not able to get up and, and uh, do what we want to do and live like we want to live. I mean, that, that's what's killing people today. That's why people today that you can't get to come to church. That's why people today that you can't talk to them about God. You can't tell them about God. You can't tell them this church loves you. This church loves you. God loves you. 
They won't let you come and be with us. And it's hard to get through people's heads. I mean, I've got friends out there that that have seen so much stuff going on in their life that you can't get into their heads enough to realize that there is a God. There's somebody that loves you. I don't care what the world has done to you. I don't care what your best friends have done to you. God loves you. And when it comes to time to answer, you'll answer to God. You won't answer to this one over here or this one over here. You'll answer to God for what you've done. Amen. But I'm, I'm just glad that, that I know Him. And I'm glad He knows me. Amen. I'm glad He made that promise. He said, I'll never leave you or I'll never forsake you. Thank you, Lord. I tell you, folks, if I thought I had lived one day in this life now without God, I wouldn't want to face it. I wouldn't want to. Amen. Amen. And if I ever thought I even had to think about dying without God, <coughs> man, what a heartbreak. It's a heartbreak just to even think about your worst enemy out there. To have to think about them dying lost and going to hell. It's a scary situation, folks. We want to blame everything that goes on in our life. We want to blame it on this one and that one. But you know who's to blame for all this stuff? Most time ourselves. Because we refuse to submit ourselves to God. We refuse to bow down. We're too prideful to, to get ourselves down and let people see us. Saying, hey, I've sinned and I've, I've failed. And I need God. I mean, I don't care where you're at, who you're at. Who you are or anything else. <coughs> I think Brother Burton tells you the same thing I'm telling you tonight. I don't care if you're the biggest preacher in town, if you're the deacons in town, who you are. If your life has got wrong in you, if something happened between you and God and you failed God, <coughs> then you've got to repent. You've got to make things right between you and God before time comes. And time will come. It's, it's coming right now, fast. The man will speak. James 4 and 7 says, Submit yourselves to God, and the devil will flee from you. And don't think your life doesn't matter. Don't think, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a member of this church here and, and my life don't really matter that much. I mean, you know, I come to church here and stuff, but, you know, what the heck, what, what do people think about me? Let me tell you what they think about you. There's somebody somewhere in your life they may be sitting in a seat right beside of you. They may live in the next door neighbor to you. Maybe somebody on a job from you. But there's somebody has got their eyeballs on your life. That's right. There's somebody watching never move that you make. You know why? Because the devil's telling them, you got to watch them because if you'll watch them for a little bit, they'll mess up and you'll understand that I'm right. That's why we've got to walk that way that people people won't see that fault in us the devil tell them, you know, they've got fault, they're they're wrong, they're doing this, they're doing it. You gotta walk 
in a way that they won't see that thought. You've got to be the kind of person that God wants you to be. Blessing God. You've got to be willing. You've got somebody that needs your help. You've got to be willing to be able to lead it to them. Now you got to watch and you meet people. I mean, every, everybody that you meet, I think if we meet people, Brother Byrne, I think everybody we meet that we want to meet in a way to be pleasing to God. I mean, I've seen some of the videos and stuff that you've done about the child abortion thing. It takes God to be able to stand there with somebody fussing at you and, and mocking you and carrying on. But I've seen Brother Vernon tell that I love you. I'm, I'm not arguing with you. I'm not going through all this stuff or anything. But I just want to explain to you. And that's what we've got to do with it. We can't go in there. I know everything and you don't know nothing. That's not what they want to hear. They want to hear you love them. And you care about them. And that's exactly what you show them. And I, I, I know there's some of them, I don't care how nice you could be, they can still be as rude as they can be. But that don't mean we have to get down and be there with them, though. That's right. Because you know what they'll... Remember when all this stuff's over with? They'll think. You know, when I was going through this and I was up there in the Johnson stayed here forever. You remember that, that pastor at Vernon Hall that came over? <coughs> and he told me about this. He warned me about this. He told me what God said about all these things. That's what you're going to remember. They're going to remember that love that was showed to them by somebody that didn't even know them. They're going to know that somebody cared about them, whether they're family or friends or nobody else did or not. They're going to know somebody cared enough to try to come and help them go through what they're going through to stop them from killing that, murder, uh, killing that baby. And it may be, maybe years down the road. Maybe when we're all gone. There'll be things, Brother Vern, that you preach and teach today that you may not hear no response out of it in your days. But some word God promised that those words that you preached and taught and the things you've done, it's not going to come back void. That's what we need to do. We need to try to get down and, and live our life in respect to God and to people around us and let everybody know what our testimony is. You can't have a testimony doing this, but over here, doing this is the opposite of it. You gotta live exactly how you're asking people to live. Melissa, if they come in on your job up there and told you stuff's gotta be done this way here, and they've been doing it a different way every day since you've been there, you get out of late with
And that's what we can't that's what we can't do to people. We can't we can't confuse them. The devil's got them confused in us. The devil's the devil's trying to the devil's trying to tell everybody today that all this stuff that Brother Burns teaching and preaching and stuff. <coughs> Sunday school lesson that Brother Quentin's getting up and going over. The devil's trying to tell people, don't believe in this stuff. It's all lies. And if we sit around and we turn around and we back it all up and give them proof of it, then they ain't ever going to believe God's word or anything else. I know it's probably been a little off with what I went through tonight, but I just felt like it. You know, we, we've got to get our lives. We've got to watch for that light. That's what we've got to watch for. We've got to look for a guiding light. Something will help us through this world here because there's nothing but darkness in this life that we're in now. And we've got to watch and we've got to find that life which is Jesus Christ because that's the only way that's going to lead us through this life we're in. And the things that's going to happen in this world is not going to be any fun. And I feel for these children as they grow up. A lot of us are older folks, we grown up in the good times. We thought the time it was rough. We thought the time Brother Hayes we was growing up, man, it, it's a pill. But it's really the good times of life. But today's children are going up, they're going to really see. And what they're going to say is, it is pitiful. Just want you to know I love each and every one of you tonight. I hope that y'all got something out of this. But let's just take and, and get our minds set that we're going to enter the narrow end of that funnel. And that's what we're going to walk. And when it comes time that we can get to that big end where we can see the light, and we'll know we're all right. Okay? I love each and every one of you. I'm going to turn Brother Burns loose up here on you now.